Good evening and welcome to Back Chat. I'm your host, Temba Madima. We are at episode number 100, and with us this evening, we've got El Yune Krier Kruger in the building. So we're excited for this one. Hope you guys are too. Good evening, South Africa. Welcome to Back Chat. Proudly hosted by Backtrack. Yes, sir. Uh, we've got El Yune, she's in the building. I see she's waving. I'm gonna just send her a request. And then we're gonna get started. So welcome everybody. Hope you guys are Yes sir. Good evening and welcome to Back Chat. I'm your host, Tim Madima, powered by Backtrack Sports. How are you Nay? How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Super, super. Thanks for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, it is an honor. We are grateful and thankful for your time. <laughs> how are you doing? Thanks for having me. Um, I'm good yeah. under circumstances. How are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, good. Uh, well, at least the circumstances are getting a bit better now, so it's a bit more positive, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Absolutely. So, yeah, looking forward. Uh, I'm looking forward to this chat. I think we're going to have a good one. It's episode number 100. I mean, can you believe it? <laughs> the lucky 100. <laughs> yeah, a special 100. So, yeah. So yeah, gonna be, It's going to be a de definitely a good one. We've got some giveaways that you're going to be doing as well. Uh, for those who are watching and tuning in today. So it's going to be fun. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, first thing we do on Back Chat before we, we get started is just I'm going to do an introduction uh, so that people know exactly who we're dealing with, who we're chatting to tonight. And then we're going to pick it up from there. Is that cool? Perfect. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, with us this evening, we've got El Yune Krier. She is, listen up, African Under-20 Championship Heptathlon Gold Medalist. Uh, she's also the SA Championship silver medalist in the long jump, World University Games, long jump, and 4 by 100 meter team SA representative. We've got, she's also the SA under 20 long jump uh, champion, as well as the SA under 16 long jump champion. Ladies and gentlemen, El Yune Krier. Is Krier Kruger? <laughs> I don't know, I always introduce myself as Kruger because we're mainly English at home. But I yeah. guess it's actually Kruger. So yeah, all right. Kruger. We'll go with we'll go with Kruger or Kruger for those who wanna Kruger. Um but yeah, <laughs> thanks for joining us. It's interesting, you know, um go, going over like uh, some of your achievements, it's like uh it's interesting. Uh, but we'll get to that. Uh, I mean it's uh that, that's why that's why it's always so fun having these chats, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's start from the beginning. Um, who is El Yune? I mean, who is El Yune Krier? Why, why athletics? You know, why did you choose track and field, and how did your journey begin? Um, well, I think I have a pretty um, long, but I'm going to try to keep it short. A unique <laughs> story. <laughs> now we've um, got time. We've like, got thirty minutes. I like to speak a lot, so just interrupt me. Feel free whenever. <laughs> go, go um, for it. <laughs> I actually used to play tennis um, oh. on a pretty high level. Um, okay. And I think that was my number one sport. And mm. the thing I probably saw myself doing um, when I was in high school, after school. Um, but unfortunately, um, you know, if you're in an Afrikaans school, <laughs> um, in a small town, um, you end up doing everything. So um, <laughs> I was playing tennis, I was doing netball, I was doing track. And I think everything just got a little bit too much um, yeah. out of control because um, the tennis requires long hours. I mean, you train three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon. And yeah. um, I think it just got too much. And the thing was, if you wanted to play professionally, um, all the meetings that you, not meetings, all the events and tournaments that you had to attend um, was in school time. And oh, all okay. my friends who were playing with me were doing homeschooling. So oh. um, it just, it kind of became impossible for me to really, you know, get a good ranking, a good world ranking and really put myself out there with tennis. Um, and then I guess I just fell back into, like fell back in love with athletics. So um, I only started doing athletics seriously um, in my first year, actually. I was telling um, someone else earlier today. Wow. Um, I, I did my first preseason at the end of my matric year. So before that, um, I would literally just, uh, um, I just want to quickly give a shout out to <laughs> Shindu. Happy birthday to the best trading partner. We Check the you. dawn. 
and I Check promise <laughs> I'll join your bra soon. <laughs> We're having a bra for her. Like a month. Um, yeah, so then I just started doing track again and really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, it kind of just grew from there. Wow, that's yo! I never knew. I, I never knew about the tennis. So you were, I'm sure. So did you still follow? I mean, uh, Australian Open is going on now. Uh, I saw Serena. No, I'm a diligent watcher. Of course, yeah. I like to follow the tennis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my, my favorite player used to be Maria Sharapova, but now unfortunately, she's not there anymore. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that's interesting. I never, never would have guessed. All right. So then, obviously. Uh, you de you decided towards the end of your matric year, okay, I want to take on athletics. And obviously, it's an interesting journey because heptathlon, somehow heptathlon is in the mix. You're doing more than one <laughs> event. Is, is this something that, obviously, from playing many sports, you decided, let me do many events. Uh, is, was that the reasoning behind it, or how, how did your heptathlon journey begin? <laughs> Um, no, I think I think what actually happened was um, when I was younger, I used to do long jump and hurdles because my mom right. was a spring ball hurdler, um, and she also did long jump. And I guess yeah. so you kind of you just fall into the pattern of what um, what your mom did. Yeah. But um, then when I went um, over from junior to senior, I mean, at, in my first year, I mean, only starting train, training seriously then. It was just really tough for me to make the transition because um, in a junior level, you can easily win essays, um, do really well with a 590, 6 meters. And then if you want to go over to senior, I mean, you really have to make that step up. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have to start jumping 640s. And I, I think I just wasn't there yet, um, especially because I was kind of a late developer with the athletics. Um, mm. So then I decided to do the heptathlon to just gain strength because, you know, um, you hear of many great athletes who first, like Daphne Skippers, for instance, who first did heptathlon. And I mean, you have to develop every part of your body yeah. um, and really become strong in every aspect to be able to do the heptathlon. So I think that was my, my main goal of starting the heptathlon was just so that I could become stronger and give myself a chance to move over into senior athletics. Wow, I mean, it's we've seen we've seen the transition from uh, uh, heptathlon to you know specializing in one event. I mean, Daphne Shepherds is one of those who did uh, the heptathlon and became like a phenomenal sprinter. So it looks like uh, the long jump, uh, like you said, it runs in the family, and that's the event you've chosen. Uh, so we'll see. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, you know, if we just go to some of your 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 your, your performances, your your PBs on the Long jump, obviously the the six point six one meter, that must have been a, a special moment for you. Uh, tell us about you know obviously and obviously jumping consistently six four nine, six four two, and so on as well. How, how did that feel like? I know that's a, it's a, it's a special one being a, a medalist at a senior essays. I mean, it sets you up. It tells it's almost like an indication of okay, I've arrived now, off mm -hmm. to the, the the next one. Now is to take the title and then take on the world. <laughs> no, definitely. No, I think um, 2019 definitely came as a surprise here for me. I mean, um, with everything being said about the heptathlon, um, it ended so bittersweet because mm. the heptathlon was actually the reason I had like a career-threatening injury. Um, I think I mentioned in one of my Varsity Cup interviews as well, mm. I actually um, fractured two of my... Um, vertebrae on level L5, on the <laughs> same level left and right. And wow. um, the doctor actually told me it was because of overtraining. Mm. So uh, I suspect the javelin. Um, I really love him, Tashis, and he helped me so much. <laughs> but I hate javelin. <laughs> like, it is the worst event ever. <laughs> um, just not for me at all. But yeah, so um, I was out for an entire year, and I really yeah. spent that year, I think six of the 12 months, I was just doing biokinetics every day, you know, those little hated exercises that nobody wants to do. Yeah. I spent like most of my time doing that and running on the Alter G. And when I actually was able to run again, I just felt so refreshed, if I can put mm. it in that way. And everything just came into place because I think many times you so um, focus on one thing and you have these little tiny errors and you keep, you just can't get rid of them. 
Mm. And I think for me that year it was just completely like a fresh, like a fresh start. I mean, for a year I couldn't even run. Um, so when I came back from that, everything just fell into place. And being able, I think, I think the best part of 2019, um, if I'd have to say, was not the 661, which was, by the way, like amazing. Yeah. I think it was the consistency. Yeah. Um, you know, just going out and not having that fear of, oh, what if it's not going to go well today? What if I'm going to overstep? What if my run-up's not going to be right? There was like a consistency that you could mm. build on. And you always, you always knew, even though you had your good days and your bad days, you had a base. And you know that mm. was what you always jumped. And I think for me, that was the best part of, of 2019. And then obviously when that 661 came, on that day, I'm, I'm still really bummed about it because I actually saw the um, results the other day on someone else's page. And everybody else's wind was negative, like hey. minus one, minus two, and mine was pos minus plus three. So it was a legal distance. But I think that just gave me so much confidence, you know, just seeing, I mean, the wind does help, but, you know, you, you start to believe in yourself and believe that, yeah. well, I can actually reach more than than what I ever thought. So that was amazing. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the, if, everything, you know, happens for a reason. And I think the most important thing to, I mean, like you said, you know, just from building blocks, coming from the varsity athletics, where you were one of the best performers, obviously, on the day, and then just building it up that whole season, you know, th those little small moments and small memories are what, end of the day, it's, it's what keeps you going, you know. And, and like you yeah. said, you're just hungry for more. And there's definitely more to come. I mean, you're still 22 years old. Jumping uh, is, is an event that requires, you know, um, it, it takes a lot of time, technique, developing your muscles. Uh, you're still a bambino, which is a, a, a good thing, you know. Um, it, it definitely means that there's definitely uh, room for improvement in the future. So that's cool. I want to talk about this one because obviously this is, it's a, it was probably... Like you said, you for almost 12 months, uh, you weren't able to jump and so on. How do you get out of something that difficult? Obviously, as a young athlete, you've had the African uh, Championship gold medalist. So you, you, you know you can win at, at major competitions and so on. How do you deal with a setback of, of being injured for, for that long as well? Well, I think um, step by step. <laughs> if I can say it like that. Um, yeah. When I first got the injury, they told me that it would probably be six to eight weeks and mm -hmm. then I'll um, be able to start cycling and doing rehab or whatever. Um, what they didn't tell me at the time was that vertebrae actually, it doesn't regenerate. So sure. if you break, if I can say it like that, if you break a vertebrae in your back, it never grows back. It's, mm. it's forever like severed from the... From the cord, if I can put it like that, and um, I didn't know that at the time. So in my mind, it was six weeks out, mm -hmm. and then I can start doing cycling and small things again. And yeah. um, I mean, after six weeks, you still have pain, so you think, oh, just another, let me take another two weeks. Maybe it'll be better then. And then you do two weeks, and you're still in pain. Mm. Um, and then you take another four weeks, and then six weeks becomes six months. Um, so I think on the one side that actually helped me because I think it can morally and like mentally it can be completely like destroying um, if someone tells you are you're going to be out for a year just yeah you know, that's hard that that's what it is um, mm. so for me it wasn't like that it was always like the, the hope that okay in two weeks I'll be able to start in in four weeks I'll be able to start and I think the fact that my coach I'm bad now and was so patient with me um never forced me into anything i mean the first day i was back at training i'll never forget it we were in the gym and he mm. was actually walking around after me with almost with his hands like this just trying to make sure that i don't hurt myself again so um yeah but i think if you can just if you have an end goal and i think that's why it's so important for everybody to have goals if you have an end goal i mean um that's what motivates you and you can keep yeah. going and keep focusing and holding on to that good in your life. Um, I think that's what helped me through. And the fact that I was maybe still really young. So yeah. it wasn't like, you know, you're 29 and you get an injury and this is it. So I, yeah, I think that's I, was tough. 20, I was 19 when I, when I first got the injury. 
so we're just still we're still earning in my career. Yeah, like you said, I mean, it's, it's all, <laughs> it reminds you a lot of like uh, with the lockdown, you know, they said, hey, guys, you're going to be out for like three weeks, stay home, you know. And then after three weeks, they're like, okay, guys, it's another month, stay home, you know. Those. Yeah. <laughs> it actually helps those, you on the one hand. It helps. <laughs> yeah, like, you always okay, have something to work for. for. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, definitely. No, I think it was the same as the injury. Same as lockdown. <laughs> Yeah. So tell us, role models. Did you have a role model coming up? Was there somebody that you specifically looked up to to say, okay, I want to be like that athlete. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to achieve. Or how, how did you take it with your, uh, when you were coming through the ranks? Um, well, I think when I was young, obviously I played tennis. So um, <laughs> my role model was obviously Maria Sharapova. I had yeah, the yeah. earrings and I had the crowns <laughs> and everything. Um, but I think when I started um, going over into track, um, I actually saw Jaina Lostra in training yeah. um, at, at the Fani one day. I think it was her and Gira and Linku and all of them. And I thought, wow, like, that's so amazing. And I, I was just sitting there watching them train. And I think after that, like, I accidentally found her on social media the one day. And... Um, yeah, from there I was like literally obsessed with her. I remember through all my matric year. Um, I was a big fan. <laughs> so I think um, in in the beginning of my more serious athletics career, it's definitely been Jenna. Um, wow. But now as you grow and you get your own event, um, because obviously I don't do 800, so it's a bit mm. difficult. Um, I'd say... Actually, different. I'm trying to think now. Um, I really at the moment look up to Marina Bay. Okay. Um, I think she was also at World Student Games. She won World Student Games, and she also kind of came out of nowhere, which I think kind of relates to my story. Um, yeah, that's... She was like jumping average, and then one year she just had an amazing year, and it just went upwards from there. So I think at the moment I would say definitely her. That's cool. I mean, you're in the 800. Yeah, your 800 uh, was part of. <laughs> <laughs> they, Why do you have to bring to... it up? Oh my gosh! <laughs> hey, things. It... Um, the... <laughs> so the eight hundred was one of your your the events you had to do as well. I mean, yeah, one of many. But I mean, I think long jump yeah. uh, suits you well, and also like, yeah. sprints. Obviously, sprinting is is something that um, I see most jumpers they they like to to put the two together. Um, Obviously, in Port, you run a lot of the 60s and 100s and that type of stuff as well. Um, so, yeah, who knows? You know, even the, 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 the 60 is one of those events where you've, you've, you've clocked some uh, serious times. But you know what I like a, a lot about what's happening, especially in Port, is that, yo, Port, you guys are, like, pushing, you know. There's competitions. Uh, you guys really um, push each other into running fast. The coaches, everybody there. I mean, uh, what Jean Fester and all the other coaches that started doing, it's really creating a, a very, like, competitive environment where everybody just wants to come there and, and run. So that's, that's, that's good. It's good for you guys. Yeah, it's, and it's very no, important. I think, I think it, like, the whole environment in Port, it's, it's a really, I think, if you want to put it like a professional environment. Yeah. And, um, like, from John and Fashes and all of them are really, really working hard and trying to... Um, despite the terrible conditions and the circumstances we're facing, they're still trying to um, do their best to get meetings going and um, to maintain that competitive environment. Because as you said, it's really difficult um, just to, I mean, even I, I thought it with myself, to continue training and training and training yeah. and nothing happens. And I think later on, you just kind of get demotivated. I, I mean, I was there myself. I, before the meetings last year, I was so over it actually. Um, which yeah. is just scared to stop because with my luck, I'll stop training. I think I'm going to take a two week break and then the meetings <laughs> will start. So, no, we're really, really grateful for all the work they've been doing in Port. It's, it's really amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, obviously, this is probably one of the most important questions I'm going to ask you is your motivation. What What is your, what's your motivation? What's the, the, the the thing that keeps El Yune going like Monday. I mean, let's let's be honest. Track and field is it's not like uh, other sports. It's not like tennis. It's not like uh, netball. It's not like you know. It's it's just different. It's just 
it's different because it's difficult and it's such, it's so personal because you have to obviously overcome all your 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 overcome come a lot of demons self doubt you know fear all those type of things uh to become you know great or anything so what what is your biggest motivation would you say um uh, i think i'm i'm a really i'm really hard on myself like my mm. personality is really like i'm a perfectionist so i like having everything you know going smoothly and planned out i think i've given my coach so much like so many headaches because I like to know what I'm going to do for the whole month so I can Yo. plan my life you know? <laughs> you know so I think I think that's what motivates me and I think it's also a thing about um if you actually if you see progress I think that's the biggest motivator and I think yeah. I think that's the same for most people because if you're just training and you you don't ever see yourself getting better then what's the use but I mean small things yeah. like doing a time trial or training or standing long jumps or something stupid like that i mean if you can see yourself getting better that also i think it's like if you're trying to lose weight and you see oh you're losing weight then you're going to be more more motivated to actually follow your diet or whatever yeah it's yeah yeah it's just a stupid example but i think i think definitely that's it and i think also um if you have like a good support system so people around you who encourage you i mean in the end it's like i said it's all up to you um I have this argument many times because I feel like for instance if you play rugby um and you get to the field the day or you maybe you didn't train hard for months or whatever you still have 14 other guys making up for you but in track yeah. and even even in tennis I mean if you have a little bit of ball sense even if you didn't train hard you'll still be able to do pretty well but in track and field it's it's speed and power and if you don't work on those aspects then you're not going to do well it doesn't yeah. matter like there's no other way of putting it so no i think if you do if even if you have a good support system like in my case i'm i'm fortunate enough to still study from home so i finished my pharmacy degree um from from the house which is really wow. really amazing i know some people will be like but i have a great relationship with my parents um and it just made everything so much easier i mean coming home to an empty house when you're negative and demotivated can just worsen the situation but yeah. if you walk in here and you have your mom waiting for you and you know always a word of encouragement and your coach and everyone i think that that also plays a big role in my motivation absolutely absolutely so i want to ask a question it's not a it's not, let's call it a trick question or not it's not uh, very difficult so if you had to choose very simple between breaking a world record or winning uh, an olympic medal you've got one chance one chance of at both of these ones which one would you take world record olympic gold medal i think world record okay because i feel like that's more um more like lasting like you leave a lasting legacy and lasting impression I mean with the Olympic gold medal also obviously but <laughs> if I had to choose I I think I would choose the the world record and just to be able to say you know I'm the world record like women's long jump world record holder yeah um, that kind of surpasses just being the Olympic gold medalist I think no I, I mean it's it's it it, it it says a lot because I asked that question because it, you get to know a type of athlete you get athletes who are you know uh performance let's call it for what is it personal distance times driven and then you've got athletes who are just happy to win titles if even if they they, they never run far so it's it's always good you need both of them that's what makes like athletics so interesting others will always choose the medal but I'm also I always go for performance you know like yeah, yeah definitely i want time time over i mean how would you else. feel if you win an olympic gold medal and you only jump 650 <laughs> Would be so like, oh, um, uh, do I even deserve this? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see if I can take any questions here. Yo, there's so many up there, comments and so on. I'm gonna see what I can do. Uh, I say I, I mustn't keep you for too long, Shedrick. Once you at the party and the bride. Um, <laughs> sure. We've got. Uh, Why is it Kyle Hanukom says it's actually German? So Krier is correct. Um we see Athletic for Amos says hello uh, Chemba and hello uh, Yone. 
what else we've got here? There's a few other comments I saw on top there. Uh, I'm going to try to get to all of them. Anya Faniga says, Moister Macy. Uh, <laughs> we've got Nell Harting says, we love you, Nay. We've got uh, Nell Harting again, Athletic Culture. Okay, a few people greeting. Here's one, Athletic for almost says, Vata uh, Rugby Span support here, your Nay. Say the boots. <laughs> Is that also a trick question? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds like it. No, um, I support um, NEC Green Rockets in Japan <laughs> because that's the club my boyfriend plays for at the moment. So, you know. <laughs> and that's, that's your final answer, right? You're going to stick with that? Yeah. If I have to choose a team in South Africa, though, I'd probably say Cheetahs because it used to be at the Cheetahs. So, you know. You build relationships with people there and you get into the, the culture and everything. So in South Africa, yeah. it would be Cheetahs. Worldwide, it would be Green Rockets. Go so Green Rockets. Okay, next one. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you, you, what, what, what would you say is personally like your best moment uh, or your most fond, your fondest moment on the, on the track um, or the field? What, what, what would you say that was for you personally? Um, I think many people would find this insignificant, but um, the first league meeting I did in Poch after I hurt my back, um, it was a really small meeting. There were basically nobody because um, that in track was still like normal and everything. Um, it was my first time jumping and I was so nervous. And you can imagine everybody around me was really nervous. Um, my coach actually came to me like, like, like already warmed up put out my like, run up and everything and he said, are you sure you want to do this? Um, maybe we should just wait a little. And yeah. my mom was anxious and everybody was anxious. And um, the first jump I took, I overstepped, um, but it was like, you can feel when it's a good jump. And I actually asked the officials if they could maybe measure it because I was jumping alone. And um, the jump was a 6.45. Mm. And I actually burst into tears. Um, firstly, because of pure relief, I was so relieved, yes. I was pain free. Um, I felt like I was flying and it was actually incredible. And I could see everybody on the pavilion like holding their breath because I was crying. <laughs> and then I finally got to my coach, I told him, I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy. Um, I'm so relieved and you know, I'm back and I, I feel like we can actually work from here. And because many of the doctors actually told me that I would never be able to jump again. Some of them mm. told me I would never be able to even jog or like wow. carry a child around or anything like that. So I think that was one of the best moments. Um, wow. You know, That's a not, testimony not, right there. It's a glamorous, glamorous moment. But for me, I think personally, it was, it was great. It was so good. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a personal testimony. I mean, of resilience, of being relentless, <laughs> of being a fighter, warrior. You know, never back down. That's what it's all about. You know what I mean? And yeah, look at you now. You know, you 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 back back on track. And uh, you know, 2021. We're looking forward to seeing some big things. Yeah. What, what are you most excited about in 2021? What would you say is the one thing you're looking forward to the most? Um, I think being in a competitive environment again. Because mm -hmm. as you said, um, they're working hard in Poch, they're hosting amazing meets. But for me personally, the problem has been I've been jumping on my own. Yeah. Um, so I live for the pressure and like, yeah. you know, the, the BMT moments. That's when, that's when I'm at my best. I mean, I have to thank um, all the girls that I jumped with, especially Zinzi um, at yeah. Asian Champs in 2019. Because if she hadn't jumped her PB, I probably wouldn't have jumped my PB. Yeah. yeah. I just, I don't like losing. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I think if I can, if I can get back to a competitive environment with the long jump as well, um, where you, you know, you have other girls pushing you. And, um, I think, I think that's what I'm looking forward to most, you know, being in that environment where every time someone jumps, you kind of want to peek around and just see, oh, that was a good job. Yeah. Okay. And let's go. Like now you have to, Nice to make the most. Yeah. So I think I think that's what I'm looking forward to most, definitely. Now those moments are coming. Those moments are coming. I see here there's another question here. Um, it's from MJT. 
uh, she's asking, would you ever move to the U.S. like most SA athletes? Is that something that you've ever thought of or considered in the past? Um, I think in the end of 2019, actually beginning 2019, um, Florida State University actually contacted me mm. and um, they were interested in, in me coming there. And I spoke to my mom about it and, you know, actually I really did consider it. Um, but the thing is for me, and this is just like personal personal preference, I feel like yeah, yeah. so many athletes go to America um, great athletes, so, like talented athletes who mm. in South Africa, you're a standout athlete and you get noticed yeah. and um, you get chosen for international teams and um, then you go to America and maybe you're the best for the time being, but behind the door, there are 10 other people waiting for you to make a mistake to take your place mm. because the competition is so tough and um, yeah, that's intense. You're constantly living with the pressure and like I said, I enjoy the pressure. But sometimes you do trip and you do fall and you don't want to find yourself in a situation or I didn't want to find myself in a situation where I was maybe there and I was having these amazing opportunities but or these amazing facilities but I wasn't getting the opportunity to compete, especially at big meetings because maybe I had one slip up and now someone else is doing well. And I think also, um, especially for girls, because I know many um, tennis players actually also go to America after school. Mm -hmm. um, the girls are really lost, if I can put it like that. Um, mm -hmm. Most of them come back after six months. I know that's not the case with everyone. Yeah, yeah. But I just felt like, and I was also in my third, third year of my studies and my degree was, my degree is a, um, a four year, it's like an honors degree. So... I was so close to finishing. Um, you know, at that moment, it just wasn't wasn't right for me. So I just All right. Things. Super duper. No, I mean, like I said, it's, I I personally believe like going to America. It's something that you definitely need to think about and consider. And you know, it's it's not just I'm gonna go there and everything is just gonna go smooth. You know, it's it's a process. Just like any training program, you know, you don't just get to the program first year and it works like magic. It takes time, you know, and it takes adapting and you, you need to adapt first and then perform you know uh the quicker you adapt uh the quicker you'll perform so it's not for everybody some do it very well and others not you know but i mean i think it's a beautiful challenge either way for those who do go but those who stay we are always happy to have uh, our south africans in south africa uh so it's good and i mean we've seen a lot of south african jumpers have done fantastic here i mean uh, lenique yeah. Prince did well here in South Africa. We've got the likes. I mean, I don't even wanna you know, talk about the guys, Kotsa Mukwena, uh, Luvo, Raswa, Samai. Um, it goes on. I mean, there's a lot lot more guys uh, that are also pushing. And yeah, obviously, we, we wanna see that Zinzi obviously doing well in the triple jump as well. Yeah. Patience, yeah. the list will go on and on. But I mean, yeah, it, it's good to see South Africans doing well back here at home. I wanna see it. But Athletic for Omar is asking, except, except your coach, who is the number one long jump coach, in your opinion, in SA? Ooh, that's a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's step on toes. <laughs> um, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's well, obviously, my question. coach is the best, so, you know. <laughs> um, if I, obviously, I haven't had um, personal contact with so like many other coaches, but I think um, Tani Emery, yeah. is, I think she's definitely one of the standout coaches. If you just look at her, her yeah, yeah, and yeah. what she's achieved with athletes, I mean, it's, it's amazing really. And um, I was fortunate enough to actually travel with them in 2019 with her and me to a few meetings. And um, I think what also makes, makes her such a good coach and what makes it so beautiful is the fact that um, it goes far beyond just athletics. Um, I think she really cares for you as a person and she takes your, your personal interests um, at heart and really like, you know, tries to get the most out of you as an athlete um, while keeping in mind that you are human and you go through things and you experience different things in life and not every athlete is the same. So yeah. I think so. And then I would also... Um, 
Charlie Strominger. Who yeah, big Charlie. Charlie, yeah. definitely. I mean, um, I've done a few sessions with him. He's absolutely amazing. I mean, um, what he's what what he's carried over to me and my coach, what he's taught us is absolutely great. Um, I know he he's trying to make the athletics a little bit less and um, not as involved in more. But um, yeah, I also think he's one of the one of the top coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Ch- Charlie's always doing a lot of good work. Yeah, that's definitely a good one. All right. Al you know, you know um before we wrap it up you know I just want to tell the the people that are watching this is episode number 100 keep it 100 so because of that we're going to be doing um some giveaways so what I'm going to do is after we do the chat I'm going to post this video onto our feed and then um people you're going to have to answer a few questions all right you answer the questions uh on uh, on there you need to tag uh, runaway sport runaway sport is going to be giving away a voucher worth 1000 bucks they're going to be giving away some techies as well some running shoes um for for so, some athletes or anybody who's watching and you know so I'll ask you a few questions over there you've got an uh, you can just answer those you need to tag uh, Alune you can tag uh, backtrack and runaway sport Uh, for hundredth episode, and then you can win. You can win. Runaway Sport. Thank you so much for coming on and for giving away these things. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's one hundred. You know, one hundred. We're not just give away. We're gonna give away things because it's uh, why not? <laughs> can you know? I enter? <laughs> yeah, you can enter as well. Type there, you know, um, and then yeah. But I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> tag, tag yourself, and then tag Runaway Sport and Backtrack Sports. You know what I mean? And yeah, you must be following us as well. Very important. So do that. All right. Oh, your name. A message just to wrap up. Um, what message do you have to South Africans? And then we're gonna close it over there. South Africans, or even people internationally who support you, who have shown you love and have always had your back. Um, what message do you have for them? Um, I think just always keep believing in yourself. Um, so the so easy to when bad things happen um to just throw in the towel and to just give up but i think in the end god always has a perfect plan for each of our lives and even though you might not understand um why things are happening at the moment everything always works out for yeah. the good so stay motivated stay safe um and you know keep working hard every day you're going to reap the fruits <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Elyne, thanks a lot uh, for joining us this evening. We had a lot of fun. Uh it was good uh, to hear you, you know, talk about your story and your journey. A lot of things I didn't know. I think a lot of people that are watching are going to be like, "Okay, we never knew this." And I mean, that's motivating. I see Shedrick is waiting. Uh the bra is waiting. <laughs> He's hungry. Uh, He's a hungry man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, really appreciate it and yeah, we look forward to seeing a lot of uh, stunning results uh, in 2021 i know you're going to be competing locally maybe even abroad as well so yeah hope your dreams will continue to to come t- uh, true keep working hard stay focused stay hungry and yeah we're going to we're going to see you soon on the track thank you so much for having me it is a pleasure all right ladies and gentlemen you heard it straight from Elyne Krier she was with us this evening thank you so much for joining don't forget the competition i'm going to post and i'll send put some questions there enter and we're going to have a, a giveaway which we'll do next week uh when we do another chat so thanks for watching guys Elyne thank you all those who watched thank you and god bless take care and good night see you guys soon <laughs> goodbye <laughs>